And I've been saying this many times now, safety shoe wearers play an endurance sport. They must endure many hours completing compound movement tasks such as walking, lifting, carrying, and climbing. And can you imagine if they really have to finish a certain job by a deadline, they have to keep working, or they have to do overtime and longer shifts. It is really truly amazing, this type of sport, and I really, you know, feels for, I feel for the people who work hard for this. In my experience, I've encountered many clients who wear inappropriate safety footwear because they choose safety shoes based on cost and style. And there's so much more than that than regular sports shoes. Now, all safety footwear must go through quality standards such as um, puncture resistance, uh, heat resistance, water resistance, impact protection, and of course, slip resistance. Manufacturers spend big to ensure that their footwear is safe for their customers. So I strongly advise against picking safety footwear purely based on cost because a cheaper brand may or may not satisfy standards or may not satisfy five-step safety shoe check, which is what I've created. And there are three different types of safety footwear that must abide by a country's safety standards. For us Aussies, safety footwear here must adhere to Australian and New Zealand standards. The three types are safety, protective, and occupational. Each one have their own design and make. Safety and, and protective both have safety toe caps, but they differ in the impact and compression standards of the toe cap. Obviously, the safety is uh, the most compliant and has the highest protection. Now, the occupational has, has no toe cap, but is more suited for retail and hospitality. Now, before you go ahead and purchase safety footwear, I want you to consider my five-step safety shoe check. Here we go. Number one. Safety requirements. Please, please consult your occupational health and safety officer and clarify the standards and the level of safety that, that they require you to have so that you can operate on their work site or workplace. People working with oil, electrical, forklifts, pallets, concrete, stock pass, roofing all have different safety requirements. You must have these requirements confirmed before even looking for boots. Now you will find certain standards on the tongue uh, of the shoe, which is this part. You see the size, the manufacturer's ID and designation, manufacturer date and approved standard number and year, all in the tongue. This is the, mo the most vital step. Number two is the insole fit. Take out the insole, uh, purely because you can't simply press your finger at the toe box to make sure it fit due to the safety toe cap. Therefore, take out the insole, stand on it, and have a rep check that there is a, there's a 12 to 15 mil gap or a thumb gap from, a, from the end of the insole to the longest toe. And please make sure you have your socks on too. Having this done right, it means that your toes won't be impacting the safety toe cap, which does cause very common toe problems such as ingrown and bruised nails. Always make sure you wear your socks to get the true fit. Now, third, width. If you notice that your foot is causing a stretch, or your foot is hanging over the insole, midsole, then a different style boot is required. If your foot is tight, but the whole foot is sitting on the midsole without the stretch, then a half size larger is recommended. Number four is flex top. Put the boot on and flex the toes on the ground. The ball of your foot should be positioned at the flex point, which is probably this part here. Having a boot that's too rigid will stop you from walking comfortably. It's gonna hurt, it's gonna use more energy, you're gonna feel very fatigued. These aren't appropriate. Now, number five, depth. Boots should not feel tight over the top of the foot. You can either feel this is too tight with the metatarsal guard or tongue and the lace is putting too much pressure on the top of the foot that you may need to go up a half size larger. Boots should not feel loose over the top of the foot. If you can lace the, the boot with the gap between the laces uh, basically close together, then you've gone a size too big or the style is too deep. You've got to find a different one. There are certainly more factors to consider, such as temperature, uh, weight, and height of the footwear, just to name a few. But that's the amount of your, your shoe rep or guide to advise you of the different materials, weight, and properties before you buy it. Certainly the introduction of composite and fiberglass toe caps instead of steel has made safety footwear much lighter. But remember, the golden step, step number one, ask your occupational health and safety officer what is required of the workplace. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you found this insightful and useful advice. I applaud you for working hard and wearing these shoes. Look out for my article tomorrow, which will further elaborate all these steps. And I, and I wish for you to walk safer and smarter, not harder. Bye for now.
Thank you.